In order to make our time schedule, we're going to get started. <clears throat> Reading through the book of Revelation. And uh, this, is, this is how the churches would have first received it, as they would have had received uh, a letter. And this one from John, who was in exile. And the churches under pressure themselves would have been greatly encouraged by the fact that they got a letter through from the Isle of Patmos to themselves. And uh, so we will just read continuously through the book. Probably most of the time in the first reading, there was no comment made. It was, they, you just sat and you listened to the letter that came from one of the apostles, um, which was the very word of God to them. So it, it would have been a very exciting time in which you were getting uh, a new revelation in this, in this case, and a very unusual revelation. So let's begin with prayer. Thank you, Father, for the day. We thank you for your word. Your word is precious to us, and we rejoice in it, O Lord. And we ask that you would bless the reading of your word this day to our own hearts. Uh, we thank you that your word, which is inerrant and uh, which sanctifies our souls, we pray that it might sanctify us this day. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. All right, so Brother Paul is up, Brother Jay's on deck, and as we proceed through, whenever Paul finishes, he'll sit down, Jay will come up, and then whoever is up next, come on up and you'll be ready to go. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks 
which thou sawest are the seven churches. Chapter 2. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which they say, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, for else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, and ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by, of the second death. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I give her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her unto great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Chapter 3. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and thou art dead. Be thou watchful, and establish the things that remain, which were ready to die. For I have found no works of thine perfected before my God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received, and didst hear, 
and keep it and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. But thou hast a few names in Sardis that did, defile their gar did not defile their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh shall thus be arrayed in white garments, and I will in no wise blot out his name out of the book of life. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shut, he that shutteth and no one opens. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee a door opened, which none can shut. That thou hast a little power, and didst keep my word, and didst not deny my name. Behold, I give of the synagogue of Satan, of them that say they are Jews, and they are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou didst keep the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of trial, that hour which is to come upon the whole world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. I come quickly, hold fast thou which thou hast, that no one take thy crown. He that overcometh, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out thence no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God, and mine own name, new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that there were, thou wert cold or hot, so because thou art lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and have gotten riches, and have need of nothing. And knowest thou not art thou art wretched, one and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold refined by fire, that thou mayest become rich, and white garments, that thou mayest clothe thyself, and that the shame of thy nakedness be not made manifest, and I salve to anoint thine eyes, that thou mayest see. And as many as I love, I reprove and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. He that overcometh, I will give to him to sit with me in my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Chapter four. After these things I saw and behold a door opened in heaven and the first voice that I heard, a voice as of a trumpet speaking with me, one saying, come up hither and I will show thee the things which must come to pass hereafter. Straightway I was in the spirit, and behold, there was a throne set in heaven, and one sitting upon the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper stone and a sardis stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, like an emerald to look upon. And round about the throne were four and twenty thrones, and upon the thrones I saw four and twenty elders sitting arrayed in white garments, and on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and voices and thunders. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, as it were, a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, four living creatures, full of eyes before and behind. And the first creature was like a lion, and the second creature like a calf. And the third creature had a face as of a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, having each one of them six wings, are full of eyes round about and within, and they have no rest day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy 
is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. And when the living creatures shall give glory and honor and thanks to him that sitteth on the throne, to him that liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders shall fall down before him that sits on the throne and shall worship him that lives forever and ever and shall cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy art thou our Lord and our God to receive the glory and the honor and the power for thou didst create all things and because of thy will they were and were created. Chapter five, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back close sealed with seven seals, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a great voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no one in the heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look thereon. And I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the book or to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not, behold, the lion that is of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath overcome to open the book and the seven seals thereof. And I saw in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders, a lamb standing as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and he take it out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne and when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sing a new song saying, worthy art thou to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and didst purchase unto God with thy blood men of every tribe and tongue, people and nation and madest them to be under our, unto our God a kingdom and priests, and they reign upon the earth. And I saw and I heard a voice of many angels round about the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a great voice, worthy is the lamb that hath been slain to receive the power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in the heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things that are in them heard I saying, unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the lamb be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the dominion forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen and the elders fell down and worshiped. Chapter six. Then I saw when the lamb broke one of the seven seals and I heard one of the four living creatures saying as with a voice of thunder, come. I looked and behold a white horse and he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer. When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come, and another, and another, a red horse, went out, and to him who sat on it, it was granted to take peace from the, from the earth, and that men would slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. When he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not damage the oil and the wine. When the lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come. I looked and behold, an ashen horse, and he who sat on it had the name, death, and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill, with the, and to kill with sword and with famine and with pestilence by, and by the wild beasts of the earth. When the lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? 
and there was given to each of them a white robe, and they were told that they should rest for a little while longer, until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were killed, and who were to be killed, even as they had been, it would be completed also. I looked when he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth and made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree casts its, and it casts its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Then the kings of the earth and the great men of the, and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave and free man hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the, day, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Chapter 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth, or on the sea, or on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, and having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, or the sea, or the trees, until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. From the, son, and from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation and from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands. And they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they and where have they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, these are, the tri and these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, and, ha and they have washed their robes and made them white in the, blood the, uh, in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. They will hunger no longer, nor thirst any more, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd." and will guide them to the springs of, water, of the water of life, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven, about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God and out of the angel's hand. And the angel looked at the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. 
And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there was a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountain, excuse me, the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And when many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of smoke from the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. They had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. They had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stingers in their tails, and there was power to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of horsemen were two hundred thousand, thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, of, Chac of Chacnith, and of brimstone. And the head of the horses were as the head of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three were the third part of men killed, by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Chapter 10. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head, his face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven, hundred, seven thunders uttered their voices. 
Now when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things <clears throat> which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be no delay, there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished, as he declared to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomachs bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Chapter 11. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees <clears throat> and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. Uh, these have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, <clears throat> We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come in the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. 
and there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. We have come to the midpoint of John's letter that he has sent to the churches. He has astonished us with many things and also encouraged us with the view of Christ and God in heaven. John goes on. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another woman in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth, And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and threescore days." And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, and neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty-two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, 
and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he makes fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. Then I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song, before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the hundred, forty, and four thousand which were brought from the earth. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are bought from men, being the firstfruits unto God and unto the Lamb." And in their mouths was found no guile, for they are without spot before the throne of God. Then I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having an everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon, that great city is fallen. It is fallen. For she made all nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or on his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, yea, of the pure wine, which is poured into the cup of his wrath. And he shall be tormented in fire and brimstone before the holy angels and before the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment shall ascend forever. And they shall have no rest day nor night, which worship the beast and his name. Here is the patience of saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, the dead which die in the Lord are fully blessed. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors and their works follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sitting, like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, having also a sharp sickle. 
And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, and said, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vineyard of the earth, for her grapes are ripe. And the angel thrust in his sharp sickle on the earth, and cut down the vines of the vineyard of the earth, and cast them into that great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress unto the horses' bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for by them is fulfilled the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a glassy sea mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory of the beast and of his image and of his mark and of the number of his name stand at the glassy sea, having the harps of God. And they sung the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, and all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of testimony was open in heaven. And the seven angels came out of the temple, which had the seven plagues, clothed in pure and bright linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And therefore four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, which lived forevermore. And the temple was full of the smoke of the glory of God and of his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the seven vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and a grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became the blood of a dead man, and every living thing died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Lord, Thou art just, which art, and which wast, and holy, because thou hast judged these things. For they shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and therefore hast thou given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the sanctuary say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial on the sun, and it was given to him to torment men with heat of fire. And men boiled in great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the throne of the beast, and the kingdom waxed to dark, and they gnawed their tongues for sorrow. And blaspheme the God of heaven for their pains and for their sores, and repented not of their works. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water therefore dried up, that the way of the kings of the east should be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of that dragon and out of the mouth of that beast and out of the mouth of that false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, to go into the kings of the earth and of the whole world, 
to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and men see his filthiness. And they gathered them together into a place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a loud voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not seen and was not since men were upon the earth, even so mighty an earthquake. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And that great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every isle fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell a great hell like talents out of heaven upon the men. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on the many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. <clears throat> but the angel said to me, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five has fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is one of the seven and is going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw the, on the beast, these will hate the harlot and make her desolate and naked, and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put into it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled, and the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. 
for all the nations have drunk of the wine and wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she has glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon the mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise any more. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea, stood at a distance. And they cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you any more. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you any more, and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you any more. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints, and all who were slain on the earth. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, ah, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which, corrupt, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four, four beasts fell down and worshipped God that set, that set on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And the voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of, of a mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad, rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted 
that should that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true saints of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and thy brother that I have, testi that I have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony, testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in the righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vest, vesture dipped in dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth, goeth a sharp sword, that, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he, and he treadeth the winepress of, his, of the fier fierceness, the wrath of Almighty God, and he hath in his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the king, kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that have received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of, the, out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is, dev which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. <coughs> on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and they shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went up the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints, about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven f fled away and they were and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and, an, and another book was opened, 
which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things, which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. And the death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell, hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also she had a great and high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gates and names written on them which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. The construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass." But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, there shall be... No night there. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. 
But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. And He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. They shall see His face, and His name shall be on their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I saw and heard, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book." He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that is the very word of God, which is the churches have the privilege of having, as John concludes the canon. Thank you, Father, for <clears throat> your word this morning, and may your word uh, be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path always. Through Christ we pray. Amen.